Online TV, your first alert station. Action 2 News at 10 starts now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on this very special night. We follow the latest election results still coming in. Throughout the night, we'll be checking in with the top races in Wisconsin. Our crews are out a night, tonight across the state at the watch parties for candidates in both the Senate and the governor races. We'll hear from the campaigns as the excitement over this election is continuing. And 64% of the vote is Tony Evers leading by 51 to 48. While we wait to see for the final result to be called, we are checking in with both parties. And Jason Zimmerman is in Milwaukee with the Michaels campaign. But first, Brittany Schmidt is in Madison with Governor Evers' campaign and has the latest from Madison. Brittany. Cammie and Bill, patience is the name of the game here at the Orpheum in Madison as Evers supporters continue to keep their eyes on that massive screen behind me, hoping to see Evers at some tonight make a victory speech there. We've also seen huge increases among voters who are traditionally more democratic leaning. You know, young voters, for example, we are up, uh, just like in early votes, we're 300% higher than we were in 2018 among young voters, which is a good, good sign for Democrats. And Republican Tim Michaels is also watching the results. He's uh, down in Milwaukee. Jason Zimmerman is there bringing us the latest from the campaign. Yeah, Cammie, obviously people here are pretty nervous tonight watching these results come in, but we did hear some applause just a short time ago, and I was told that's because Senator Ron Johnson just went up over Mandela Barnes with the latest numbers that came out. Now, as for this race, Tim Michaels is trailing uh, Tony Evers right now by about 70-some thousand votes. This map, I am tracking those results as they come in, and you kind of see where the vote is going in Wisconsin right now. For Tony Evers, a big portion of the vote is coming out of uh, Milwaukee and Dane County. I'm going to go ahead and click on those counties so we can see here. Um, here's Madison and Dane County right now. We, the good news is for Michaels that we're showing about 82% uh, of that vote being in right now, and that's a big chunk of those Democrat votes. Also in Milwaukee County, I just checked that, and we had about half of the vote in Milwaukee. It has really come in slow tonight. But let's look at Northeast Wisconsin up here. All of it right now, other than Menominee County, is trending for in favor of Tim Michaels. And if we click on some of these, you can see what's happening in Winnebago County right now, where Michaels has a, a lead of a couple thousand votes. So I know his campaign would like to be doing better there. It's a similar situation right now in Outagamie County. Also, Michaels with a slim lead. He needed a much bigger lead to be able to overcome what's happening right now in some of the Democrat areas. But take a look at this. Green Bay right there, no votes in yet. Door County, no votes in. Shano County, no votes in. Those are all areas where Michaels can pick up some votes tonight. It is a dead heat right now. With Johnson leading, uh, what is it, about 18,000 votes in the advantage right now. Again, 64% of the votes estimated in right now. Johnson 50-50 with Mandela Barnes. Now, our crews have been following along both candidates throughout the day. Casey Torres in Milwaukee, where Barnes is watching those numbers come in. Well, but first, let's go to Emily Beyer and Nina with the Senator Johnson campaign, bringing us the very latest there. Emily. And Bill and Cammie, when those results started to come in, this whole room erupted. Very excited here tonight. Senator Ron Johnson also made an earlier appearance just before the polls closed um, and at his own watch party here at the Ground Run in Nina. Now, that really energized the crowd here. You can see that crowd continues to grow. We now see a lot of people standing, watching the poll results come in. We had just spoken with his campaign advisor, and when we asked him if and when we would see him tonight, originally he said it was up in the air for a bit so it was a delightful surprise for his supporters here to see him so early in the night people taking photos with him uh, very good spirits here and that's why why and that's what his campaign advisor told me too is that these numbers as they roll in they feel very optimistic and they believe they got they got the job done here today He's somebody that's always going to be working for Wisconsin, um, and he's trying to bring people together. You know, whether you're a Republican, whether you're an independent, whether you're a Democrat, or, or whether none of those labels apply to you, uh, he's asked for your support. Now, that energy is still very high here today. We're going to continue to watch for those results and bring you the very latest as we learn more. For now, reporting live in Nina, Emily Byer, Action 2 News. Emily, thank you. Hoping now to take over Senator Johnson's position. Mandela Barnes watching the numbers closely. Casey Torres with him tonight in Milwaukee. Casey. The Turner Hall Ballroom is coming alive with the crowd bringing in a lot of the energy. The supporters here of 
Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes are enjoying their food, their drinks, and they're cheering and laughing. However, the Democratic Democratic Senate candidate is still not in the House. I asked the team a while ago um, when he could be here. Still no word on that, but we do know that Barnes was out campaigning today, getting those last-minute votes, pushing to get those blue votes, especially here in his hometown of Milwaukee. Now it's all eyes on the monitors and people I've been hearing them cheering on. Uh, neck and neck, they are those numbers really close, but they're still not losing their positivity here. Uh, Milwaukee County Board Supervisor also spoke earlier trying to get the crowd going and she was asking if people are ready to send Barnes to the Senate, the crowd erupting into cheers. Barnes' team is saying they're ready for the Lieutenant Governor to take the Senate seat as well. Mandela Barnes has always fought for working people. He's always fought for that next generation, and uh, he couldn't sit on the sidelines um, and wait to, uh, to let Johnson keep doing it. So we are keeping a, a close eye on two other statewide races, one for Attorney General, the other for Secretary of State. In the race for Attorney General, incumbent Democrat Josh Call running for a second term and Fond du Lac County District Attorney Eric Tony running against him be, to be Wisconsin's next top cop. And this is with just 19% of the vote in. As you just saw, we had Josh Call leading in that race. In the race for Secretary of State, Doug LaFollette looking at another term after serving continuously since 1983 with an estimated 18% of the vote in LaFollette leading. Kind of a close race in this one right now, 51 to 45 over Amy Loudbeck, the Republican challenger there. So looking into the Wisconsin legislature right now, the state's seeing some contentious races there too. In some cases, the person representing their district has stepped down or plans to step down, leaving an open seat. That's the case in Senate, State Senate District 19, representing parts of out of game in Winnebago County. He's the current state senator, Roger Roth, running for lieutenant governor. Alongside Tim Michaels tonight, Democrat Kristen Alfheim and Republican Rachel Cabral Guevara battling it out. And right now, Rachel Cabral Guevara with a lead of about 12 percentage point with 25 percent of the vote counted 56 to 44 percent. In State Assembly District 54, this represents parts of Outagamie and Brown County. Jim Steineke stepped down from his position in July. Now, Democrat Joseph Van Dersen is just 20 years old, and Republican Joy Gobin are hoping to fill that spot. We have no numbers yet for this race. We are continuing to monitor that. Let's switch over to State Assembly District 54, which covers the Oshkosh area. Gordon Hinch announced he will not be seeking re-election, so it will down to Lori Palmieri and Donnie Herman. And right now, Palmieri is leading Donnie Herman by 10 percentage points that with the 59 percent of the votes in at this point in time. So for the most up-to-date poll numbers for each candidate on the ballot in Wisconsin, you can see them all right now. You can head over to our website, wbay.com slash elections. Of course, we're continuing to scroll them at the bottom of our screen, and we will have more for you as this newscast continues. Hi, we have a close race. We were just mm -hmm. looking at those numbers, about 50,000 uh, votes in between Governor Evers and Tim mm -hmm. Michaels, about 30,000 in the U.S. Senate race, a very tight race, and you like to see that. Tell us why. I like to see tight races because politicians should not take much for granted. <laughs> uh, c competition forces them to pay attention to what the public wants and to debate their challenger. Any politician who has a safe seat can pretty much ignore what the public wants. That is not in our interest. A competitive race and a fairly fought race allows us to get a better idea of what they are promising to do. And I think elections really ought to be about governance, that is, what people will do once elected and they ought to talk more about that. About a half an hour ago, Governor Evers did pop up on the screen and they shared a video of him answering the most Googled questions about himself. They were ones like, where were you born? Are you married? What did you teach in high school? Which the answer is science, by the way. Kimmy, we haven't heard from Tim Michaels yet tonight, but behind closed doors, they've got to be talking right now. Where can we pick up about 45,000 votes? And is that even a possibility? at this point. Now, we've seen a lot of results come in over the past uh, half hour or so. Take a look at the screen right here. Green Bay was a holdout, Brown County, for some time. Those results just came in. I'm going to go ahead and click on that county right now. We can see Michaels is up by 54 to 44 percent. That's about 7,000 votes in Brown County. Is that enough, though? Uh, 
that you know we've got about 56 percent that's only a little over half the boat that's in there's still some boats there that michaels could pick up he is barely winning though in places like out of gamey county up by just uh six thousand votes here that's why it's shaded in a lighter in a lighter red right there winnebago county also very close these are the key population areas at least in the fox valley where michaels really needed to do well tonight to be successful and look at winnebago county he's just barely uh beating evers there 50 to 48 percent now one more thing i'm going to point out here is where michaels is really underperforming take a look at waukesha county down here michaels only has 59 percent of the vote right now scott walker won that in the mid 60s um he really needed to hit that number so the big question now is why didn't he but there's a lot of questions that are going to be asked tomorrow if tim michaels does not um pull out this uh, tonight and, and find at least 45,000 votes, they're going to want to know, why did he come up short? Those are only some of the questions I can see being posed uh, uh, tomorrow morning, unless this changes around tonight. But you can see the rest of the area, at least in, in northeast Wisconsin, Michaels did rather well. Uh, Evers did, um, is leading in Door County. One county that we haven't seen any results come in yet is Marinette County. You can see there. I'm not sure what's causing the delay. Back just into our newsroom, within the past hour from the Madison area, voters are reporting long lines at a polling location in the town of Middleton. Now, take a look at this video from our partner station in Madison. Officials there possibly attributing the long wait to a staffing situation at the poll. As we told you, the polls close at 8 tonight, but any voter in that line is allowed to vote. We're told that line has now made it inside the polling location at this hour. Well, the midterm elections brought out a lot of voters to the polls today. From Oshkosh to Appleton to Grand Street polling location, all reported to be very busy today. No issues were reported other than one site running out of those coveted I voted stickers early in the day, but the issue was quickly remedied. By late Tuesday afternoon, a long line formed at the Grand Street Town Hall where dozens of voters had to wait more than an hour in some cases to cast their vote, but they say it was a worth, a wait rather, that was worth it. In this day, we've been waiting a long time to make sure our voices are heard, so I'm excited. I'm hoping for the right results. <laughs> in addition to the high number of voters hitting the polls in person, absentee ballots also popular during this election season as well. Brown County election officials say voter turnout was brisk as the polls came to a close today. Green Bay City Clerk Celestine Jeffries says she's exhilarated by how many people wanted to vote in this midterm election. Jeffries says she had to replenish ballots at eight polling locations. Three other locations ran out of voter registration forms. She also addressed security at polling places. Police were at City Hall and all voting locations to ensure there were no unwanted interruptions in the election process. I did just touch base with the Evers campaign just a few moments ago just asking, hey, is the governor on his way here yet? And they said he is not. They don't expect him to be here before the 1130 mark, but he is expected to be here at some point. But I want to show you here what's really the difference between the race for governor and the race for U.S. Senate. This is this is uh, the map where, where um, Tim Michaels is right now. Let's just take there's a lot of counties here tonight that Michaels is not winning or underperforming in that uh, Ron Johnson uh, did much better. And one of those is Door County in our area. You'll see this is the county in our area that went for uh, Tim Michaels. And if we, we go in on that, you can see that Evers is ahead by that. And it's a slim margin, 500 votes. But those people did go for Evers. And, and this is what I want to show you. I'm going to go back over here. We're going to put on the Senate race. I'm going to click into that. Just bear with me here for a minute while that map comes up. I'll click on Wisconsin. Now, take a look at Door County again. That is shaded in red. Now, it's a light red, meaning slightly leaning towards Johnson. But it does indicate voters who split their, their ticket at the top of the ballot. Right here, you can see Johnson's winning that by just a slim percentage. In fact, it's by about 75 votes right now. How about that, Ron Johnson, everybody? 
The men of the hour are still not in the building. People are still waiting to see Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes coming in. In U.S. House District 8, Mike Gallagher declared the winner very early in this one. He did not have a Democratic challenger. He has held that position since 2016. Far with 16% uh, of the vote. And again, Brown County very, very late with the reporting of their votes tonight. The yes vote with 67%. We'll have complete coverage for tomorrow on Action 2 News this morning. That starts at 4.30 in the morning. Again, thank you much for staying up tonight. Have a good night.